If 2K gave you the power to add one thing to 2K24, what would it be? We already know some things right now about 2K24, like the rest system is making a return with a top 10 feature, seasons are back, there is a new takeover along with a whole new redesigned takeover system, adrenaline is completely reworked and sounds 10 times better, green animations are finally back, limitless takeoff is gone, and quick drops thankfully is gone as well. There are over 150 new dribble animations alone because of pro play. There's even going to be additional rewards and seasons by buying additional season passes. Defense is completely reworked all around. And Greener Miss is returning along with the dunk meter as well. But there are also some things we don't know. Like how is the city going to look? What is the builder going to be like? What will be the best build in the game? What kind of events will there be? What rewards will we get along our 2K? 24 journey how good is the gameplay going to feel and of course how fun is the game actually going to be so i gather the group of content creators together to ask them if they could add one thing to 2k24 what would it be so make sure you're subscribed to the channel because over 90 percent of the people that watch my video are not subscribed and let me know what you would add in the comments below because we are going to be talking a lot of 2k24 in this video including some things we want to see in 2k24 and some things that are already confirmed that you might not know about so let's get into it. All right, we are here with YouTuber Joe Knows with over 1 million subscribers who is known to be a very good builder and of course a very good 2K player as well. Joe, if there is one thing you could add in 2K24, what would it be? Tough question because there's a lot of things I'd like to add, but I think the main thing I would want is I would want a game with a builder and gameplay that work together that allow diversity in not only builds but lineups in a game i think a lot of past 2ks that we've had the most fun on was when we saw multiple lineups not only on the twos but the threes and the fives we saw multiple builds be successful at the guard position at the lock position at the center position poppers insides you know slashing guards defensive minded guards three-point hunting guards dribble gods everything was viable and I think if we can get back to that, it's only going to be possible if the builder and the gameplay work together to allow specific builds to have advantages over others and allow specific lineups to have advantages over others. If it's just one build or one lineup is just so overpowered compared to the others, we're not gonna get that diversity that we want. Y'all heard Joe, he was spitting facts. He wants a builder that complements the gameplay and also gives variety of builds when you go to the park, when you go to the stage, when you go to the rec, when you go to prime, you see a variety of lineups being used because there is a variety of builds that can be used at the highest level. Now, I don't think 2K is going anywhere away from this freeform custom builder. And obviously it's been pretty broken the last couple years since they introduced it on next gen but i think they can fix it i think they could go more towards a role player type system and when i say role player i don't actually mean role player because some of y'all are gonna run in the comments and say oh no i want i want to be lebron i want to be kd i paid a hundred dollars of the game and i want to be a superstar those old builders when we talk about double archetypes in 2k19 or even pie charts those weren't role players. Come on now. Who is making a 6'10 lock in 2K19 and was called Dylan Brooks? Like, come on, dude. Those were superstars, especially if you were good th at the game. All I'm asking for is for Bills to have advantages and disadvantages, have weaknesses, and have things that they're good at. Because right now, especially in 2K23, basically every build could do everything at an elite level especially those six nine builds and i miss having to look at my opponent's builds when i'm going up against them let me know if y'all relate who remembers in the old 2ks you know you streak it on the twos you gotta look at the builds see what they're rocking with now you don't have to do that because you know whatever you're going up against they can do everything the only thing you gotta look at is their three point percentage and maybe their height that's it but anyways subscribe to the channel if you agree with me and joe on that and let me know your thoughts in the comments and let's see what creator number two had to say. We are now here with Solo, another big 2K YouTuber with over 680,000 subscribers. Solo, if you could add one thing to 2K24, what would it be? 
In 2K24, we need better dribbling, right? We have not had a good dribbling system, in my opinion, since 2K19. I feel like all the 2Ks from like 2K15 to 19 had good dribbling, and it almost feels like we were playing on like a different dribbling engine or like gameplay engine back then. Something happened between 2K19 and 20 where like it just felt a lot slower, like the comboing up just felt different. And, you know, 2K is going a more realistic route when it comes to not only gameplay, but dribbling in specific. And sometimes going real the realistic route is not always the best way to go when it comes to like video games. I feel like there needs to be a little bit of like a little arcade like, especially when it comes to the dribbling. Like I missed the days back in like 2K19 when I could just combo up and fly all around the court. There used to be a move called moving size of combos. If you guys played back then, you probably remember that. And that was taken out of the game, I believe. I feel like dribbling is something that a lot of people used to ask for, like better dribbling back in like 2K20, 21, but you don't hear it as much anymore because it's been so long since we had a good dribbling system. And I think overall, I just want to see a more arcade-like dribbling system in 2K24. I'm not saying fully arcade-like, but just a little bit more arcade-like. Now, Solo brought up a great point. The dribbling in 2Ks that were good was always very good. You think about 2K19, very good dribbling 2K. Everyone's, I mean, a lot of people's favorite 2K, 2K16, very good dribbling 2K. A lot of people's other favorite 2K, 2K17, another very good arcade-like dribbling 2K. Now, one thing that I kind of disagree with Solo on is the dribbling doesn't have to be completely or like 90% arcade to be good. Now, obviously, we've seen a lot of news about this pro play stuff, adding like 150 new dribble moves, and it's going to be a lot of more realistic stuff. So I'm going to pop up some clips on the screen that's going to show y'all the difference between what it would look like on 2K23 to that 2K24 pro play trailer we saw. So I'm just going to keep replaying this first clip right here. This is Kevin Durant cooking up the Kings, right? And on the left is 2K23. On the right is 2K24. Now on the left, pay attention to the Kevin Durant and the defensive player. You know, the defense player not really shuffling his feet right there, kind of like just drags himself over to a late contest, right? And then even Kevin Durant, like that behind the back just looked weird. The step back just didn't really look like he was creating a lot of space, right? But on the right, Kevin Durant, oh, behind the back, ah, going to the left, right? Step back, you know, even a little push off and then fading back. And even the defensive player, look at Harrison Barnes. He was genuinely shuffling his feet. Like he's actually playing defense. Like the pro play is going to be a good thing for the dribbling, the offense, the step backs, and the defense as well. A lot of people aren't talking about how pro play is going to positively affect defense, I think. Now, this second clip is a Paul George clip. Now, look at the first one's 2K23, right? He kind of does that, you know, pull back that everyone does. And then the moves just aren't stringing together. Like, do y'all see that? Like he runs, kind of stops, then does that move then pulls up and shoots like it's not stringing together but look at this look at this pro play from 2k24 you know oh oh my god i mean come on you know the hezzy the crossover the between the legs oh my green i mean it just stringed together it looked more realistic but it also makes dribbling look better and it also just makes it look like he's gonna be able to create so much more space with those moves stringing together so smoothly, if that makes sense. So anyways, I do think 2K needs to make some of the dribbling arcadey, but this pro play dribbling is got promise to it. I actually had, I actually think it could be fire, uh, but we'll have to see in 2K24, of course. So let me know what y'all think about that in the comments down below, and let's see what creator number three had to say. Okay, we are live here with Badge Plug, a very popular 2K YouTuber in the community with over 920,000 subscribers. And Badge, you gotta let me know, if you could add one thing to 2K24, what would it be? Oh my, one thing? Okay, all right, so one thing I would add, obviously that's very hard to pick one, but I think gameplay rewards is the most important thing possible because even if gameplay is good, which I would have at number two, the gameplay can be amazing. After a month or two, you're going to get bored, or most people are, because you're not earning anything while playing the game. So I think actually having solid gameplay rewards is the most important thing to have in the game if I was going to pick one because that's going to make you grind many, many months. Even if the gameplay is not as good as you want it to be, you're still going to want to play the game to unlock those rewards and you'll be incentivized to play it.
I'm glad Baz brought this up because I could not agree more. Now, I know a lot of you guys watching this video and let me know what you think in the comments are probably going to say that the most important thing for a 2K is gameplay. But for me, it's actually not. I feel like I'm in the minority in this opinion, but I think that the stuff around the gameplay is actually just as, if not more important. And what I mean by that is things to do while playing the game, you know, whether it's an event, grinding for a reward, repping up, whatever it might be. Now, 2K did confirm that the rep system is back. Now, as you can see on your screen, these are going to be the rep levels. You know, you have rookie one, two, three, you have starter one, two, three, and you have veteran one, two, three, and then of course, top 10. Now, this is only a next gen thing. So if you weren't playing next gen last year, you might have to consider playing this year. Another thing is seasons are still in the game. So you're still gonna be able to grind level one to 40 and it's gonna reset every season, but these rep levels, don't reset by the season they are you your your rep your status stays all year long now obviously we don't know the rewards we don't know how difficult it is to rep up and we also don't know what that top 10 thing means that could be like top 10 percent of players maybe actually the top 10 players maybe you get some kind of reward once you reach the top 10 but then if you get out of the top 10 you lose the reward like who knows but there's a lot of ways they could do it and it's sounding pretty good so far. I'm just hoping that the rep is difficult to get. And like my boy Bad said, there has to be good rewards. Please, 2K, do not put any cosmetic rewards in this rep system. Let me know if y'all agree with this in the comments, but I think they should, if you want a mascot, if you want a fast travel item, like a hoverboard, a jetpack, a, a pet tiger, or you know some new clothes, get that in the seasons, right? But with this rep, these rewards gotta be like making your build better. Rewards that are actually rewarding that people are gonna wanna grind for. So whatever the reward is at Veteran 3 when the first person, person reaches it and the other people that haven't reached it yet that are like maybe rookies, you know, uh, starters and they, they see him get that and they gotta be like, wow, that reward is really good. Cause this year when people saw that 2K23 legend reward and they saw my boy K Sticks go ahead and get plus four badges? For getting 100k points no no one trying to do all that for plus four bad is like the reward especially for top 10 should be overpowered and 2k is taking the right steps and giving us better rewards and more rewards i mean for 2k24 whether you're playing my career or my team your seasonal progression will go up for both at the same time so if i hit level 40 all through park i'm gonna be a level 40 on my team as well but hey for the loyal still watching this video drop a like if i should grind for top 10 I'm, we might have to go crazy and no life double h might have to come back but anyways let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and let's move on to creator number four and see what he had to say all right we are here with simply grinding another creative 2k youtuber with over 790,000 subscribers grinding if you were to add one thing to 2k24 what would it be if i were to add one thing into nba 2k24 it would 100 percent be an innovative take on rival day and 2k could do this one of two ways they could either do it by putting affiliations against each other like they have in the past or they could take the special opportunity with crossplay being introduced and make it xbox versus playstation i'm not talking about the same old rival day that we had in the past bro i want people to get excited about participating in this rival day one way that 2k could do this is by adding a leaderboard system that would reward players even if they don't end up winning the rival day so for every affiliation there'd be a leaderboard where it would show who's getting the most points for their affiliation who's getting the most wins who has the highest win percentage for their affiliation there's different stats that would be showcased on a menu where everyone can see and players can get recognition for the work they're putting in for their team now the major complaint of rival day in the past is that it rewards people like me who have no life where you can just sit at home and play it all day so my solution to that is that they introduce an elimination type system so for example you load in a rival day and you get 10 tickets each court will have a ticket price on the court so for example there'd be a court that costs eight out of your 10 tickets to play on but if you lose you lose your eight tickets and the higher the ticket costs the more wins you get for your team so let's say you play the eight ticket court and you win you would get five rival day wins for your team as opposed to the two ticket court costs that would get one rival day win for your team so it's high risk 
high reward, but once you lose your tickets, you are no longer able to participate in that rival deck. And this could be a weekly event leading to an ultimate grand prize for the winning affiliation. Now for the reward that'll make this all worth it, we could go back and repeat history where the team that wins just gets a new part, but I think that's kind of boring. For me, a reward that would get me to hop on and play every week and compete with all I got for this rival day, every player on the winning team would get plus five attributes in only one attribute of their choice, but that attribute would take effect in the builder. Imagine if you could get plus five ball handling on every single build you make from then on. That could create some new metas as well as some new build designs. But overall, I hope they introduce some type of innovative rival day that would get the community to compete. And personally, I would like it to be Xbox versus PlayStation to take advantage of the fact that this is the first year that crossplay was introduced. So Grindy brought up some great points and I like how he spoke right after Badge Plug when Badge Plug was talking about rewards and now he's talking about rewards with Rival Day. Now I do think the plus five attribute thing is a little too much for an entire affiliation to receive as a reward, but I think the plus five attribute taking effect in the builder, like that kind of reward would be perfect for this new ref system they're using. Like imagine that like, I don't know, like what is it? Starter one, you got like the plus five attribute thing for like a, your choice and then like he said all your builds you know let's say you pick ball handle all your builds from now on get a plus five you know ball handle rating and it takes a fast effect when you equip animations that would be fire but i do think if a rival day is going to work players need to have a reason and to actually have actual passion for their affiliation not only that but there can't be too many affiliations where like one is just like clearly never gonna win and then there's always the same affiliation that's winning every time so 2k if you are watching this video and you still have the ability to do this whether it's in 2k24 2k25 please just make it two affiliations not only that make it xbox versus playstation this way they could actually be competitive because it's a team versus another team not only that but people actually care about repping their console xbox is talking crazy about playstation playstation is talking crazy about xbox it's been a rivalry that's been going on for literally years basically decades and this would be a perfect opportunity to take advantage of it now i'm not sure what kind of reward they could do for the winning team i'm thinking maybe like the daily spin reward for the winning affiliation is like souped if they win like let's say xbox wins rival day and now their daily reward or their daily spin the wheel is like crazy so instead of like a thousand vc it's like fifty thousand vc if you land on the vc thing instead of like five one or ten gatorade it's literally a hundred gatorade or instead of like you know five boosts it's either unlimited boost or a hundred boosts in every category and they can even add new rule rewards for the wheel as well but let me know which console you guys are repping in 2k24 there can even be like rival day winning clothes so if playstation wins you know they get a jersey that's like you know season one rival day winners or something and maybe it could be like a bunch of gold jerseys that are like have the playstation logo on or whatever and then there could also be a thing where whoever's like winning rival day or is like takes control of like a double rep trophy or something and then the double rep trophy gets placed in the affiliation xbox or playstation that's the winner so let's say xbox won the last rival day the double rep trophy gets placed in the middle of the xbox park and everyone that's on xbox gets double rep until playstation until playstation takes the crown back or whatever in the next rival day and let me know what you guys think about this rival day idea from grinding in the comments below and let's go ahead and see what creator number five had to say all right we are here with another 2k content creator my boy gv who is a creative twitch streamer who streams 2k and an up-and-coming my league youtuber gv if there's one thing you could add in 2k24 what would it be for me i think the biggest thing i would love to see added for 24 would be a ranked mode you look at all the other top multiplayer games out there in the market you got things like valorant apex legends overwatch call of duty they all have ranked modes and are all very very popular between content creators casual players competitive players it's somewhere all of them can go they can compete against other people them around their levels it's someone they all can go compete against other people on their level and try to constantly improve get to that next level i i just think it gives the players an extra level of content on the game to experience and to enjoy it gives them a reason to want to keep playing instead of just stepping on the court and simply playing which is fine and all but sometimes you want a little bit more and i think that's where a ranked play can come in you have a goal you're trying to achieve you're trying to get to that next rank 
if you're not good enough, it's giving you a reason to want to practice, want to improve, and just keep playing more to get to that next rank. I know I've played some ranked modes of other games, and I, I found myself having a hard time getting off the game for the night because I'm like, man, I got to play one or two more, get one or two more wins, and, and try to hit that next rank. So I think that would be by far the biggest thing 2K24 should add is a ranked mode. I think my boy GV is right with this one. A ranked mode on 2K would absolutely change the game. Something I like to say a lot is 2K is not a very good game in the sense of of being good for new users it's not very new user friendly if that makes any sense think about it if you're brand new to 2k you get on the game whether you got it, let's say you get out from game pass for free right you get on the game you try to play my team you're gonna need to buy some packs or you're gonna need to put in a ton of time into grinding for those cards you want to go play my career you're gonna have to buy some vc to upgrade that build or you're gonna have to put a ton of time into my career 2k's best modes cost a lot of money to play or a lot of hours to play and this is just to be able to compete so imagine if they did add a rank mode that had a bunch of preset builds so you know how you get on games like rainbow and you just pick your operator load up and get into a game imagine if you load up 2k pick your build and play i mean that would be so simple and amazing for newer players especially players that don't have time to grind builds don't have the money to upgrade builds but still want to be able to compete online at some kind of level let me know what y'all think about that but let's go ahead and see what creator number six had to say all right we are here with another youtuber my boy cole who has over 900 000 subscribers on youtube and Cole, if you could add one thing to 2K24, what would it be? We need more body animations. Well, hold on, restart. Fuck up. I think the biggest feature we need in NBA 2K24 is the body up animations on defense, okay? One of the biggest issues we had in NBA 2K23 was a lack of animations on defense at the top of the key, okay? People could just run right by you. We had badges like clamp breaker, and uh, it basically just bailed out the offensive player at any time. So in NBA 2K24, we need body up animations on the perimeter. Mike Wang has already confirmed that we're going to be getting that, so it makes me happier. You know, I just think defense has been so like just left in the dust for the past few years now so hearing that defense is going to be just as op as offense is what is going to make nba 2k24 balance in my opinion that's what i think and cole is spinning some facts right there i'm going to put a clip on the screen this is from 2k16 if y'all remember pretty boy fredo against red city boy that was an ultimate match of two very good players in 2k16 and look at red city boy put this dude in a box we haven't seen perimeter defense like this since 2k16 I mean, dude was literally in a box because Red City Boy's defense was just that good. And it's not like Pretty Boy Fredo was some bum. Like, he was a good player, too. So we need that kind of defense back. I 100% agree with Cole. And so far from the news we've seen, Mike Wang has said some good stuff about paint defense. And Wolf, another gameplay dev, has said some good things about perimeter defense. So hopefully, when we get the game, we play the game. It, it, it turns out that defense is actually fire in 2K24. But anyways, let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. And let's go ahead and hear from our last creator of the video. All right, next YouTuber we have here is Zach2K, who has over 225,000 subscribers and is in the builder a lot throughout every single 2K, making his creative videos. Zach, if you could add one thing to 2K24, what would it be? Okay, my change would be definitely in the builder. I want us to go back in time to the more more simple builds where maybe it's a single or dual archetype similar to like either 2k19 or 2k20 but not their exact builder you know uh i want something fresh and new but just something along that vibe where um your build doesn't do absolutely everything people have to make builds that work together it's not like three lebrons on the same court there's like oh you got a role play you got a mike conley point guard you got a uh we got a tony allen lockdown and like we got a, who's a, who's a we have a kevin love stretch big um, but like, obviously you might not play the best on your build compared to like other years, but if you know what you're doing, a role player build would still be okay. Um, also another reason why I kind of like it more like 2K20 and not mid, not necessarily 2K19. I like the, the newer build names where instead of 19, you have like shot creating slash or stuff like that. You kind of know what the build is doing. As long as the build name makes sense for the build and it's not crazy like and you only see like a couple build names, I think that's good. Um, I like the rare builds. That's one of the main things I do on my channel, at least what I used to. 2K23, you can see like a 6'9 demigod. You don't even look at the build name. You just assume the build can do everything. It can shoot, dunk, lock down, 
play just dribble everything i want the build name to make sense but also i want a lot of variety in names and i want a lot of variety where you can play in any build and have fun and be meta Zach is right. He's kind of agreeing with Joe in the beginning of the video. And one thing to note is like to have a good variety of builds, there needs to be a lot of builds that work and are good at the highest level. So for example, in 2K19 3v3 comp stage, you saw all types of lineups. Play sharp, lock, glass. Play sharp, lock, you know, rim protector. Play sharp, lock, lock. You know, stretch, stretch, stretch. Lock, lock, lock. Sharp shooters at the one. Stretch bigs at the one. Play sharps at the one all types of different lineups that could work at the highest level if they work at the highest level they'll work at all levels of the game and yeah we do need some build names that make sense because i'm not trying to look at the inside score and think what the heck is that you can make it a thousand different ways you know what i'm saying but anyways make sure to drop a like on this video if you are excited for 2k24 subscribe to the channel because we got 2k24 giveaways on the way and you need to be subscribed to answer them and make sure to click on this video on the screen and uh yeah drop a like for my 2k24 build soon because we gotta start talking about what i'm gonna make